gang. Well, breaking news now. Let's head down to the federal bankruptcy courthouse in Lower Manhattan, where Adam Shapiro is standing by with two very special guests. Adam. Yes, we have an exclusive interview with Irving Picard, the court-appointed uh, trustee in the Madoff case, along with his representative, his attorney, also from Baker Hostetler, David Sheehan. And we've just come out of the hearing over this fight over net equity between the Madoff victims as well as the trustee. Mr. Picard, let me start with you. Seems to be, you know, this argument over whether SIPC funds are insurance or an advance on funds that ultimately a trustee would recover. Is that really what's at the heart of this? It seems to be. Uh, although we do not believe that the statute, when you look at it, uh, says that the 500, up to $500,000 in this case is insurance. The way it works is that you have to allow a claim, and if the claim is allowed for, say, $500,000, the customer in this case could get up to $500,000, and it's claim would be completely covered. If the person had a claim of a million dollars and would also and it was allowed, the customer would get the five hundred thousand dollars and then out of the recoveries would get an additional amount, but that percentage is figured on the million dollar claim, not on the five hundred thousand that's left. So the the SIPIC money is an advance to the customer so that the customer can get have money and not have to wait until we're in a position to make a distribution. But brokers often say, and I've had my own broker say this to me, you're covered, you've got SIPIC insurance. So you're under the, the perception of insurance, like with house insurance, if the house burns down and you have a replacement value, they rebuild the house. That's not, not what SIPIC is. That's correct. So, so Mr. Sheen, let me start with you. So if I put a dollar in with Mr. Madoff, years and years ago and that dollar grew to twenty dollars and then he became a fraud and he told me i had a hundred dollars what you're saying is that we have to base your claim on the one dollar not the twenty that might have grown legitimately or the hundred that made off fraudulently told me no it would be the twenty uh... we would give credit for the legitimate increase if he made actual investments and the profit was achieved to twenty dollars the eighty dollar difference between twenty and a hundred would be disallowed because that was all fictitious profits so that argument that one of the attorneys made uh, earlier on that, you know, you have to determine when he became a fraud or not, is that a, re is that a relevant argument? Well, I think it's highly relevant and one we agree with. As a matter of fact, we're going through all the books and records now to take it back as far as we can. Uh, we're into the 1980s at this point, but still looking, still researching. Everything we found through that date still demonstrates that it was a fraud, that there were no securities purchased. Well, let's assume that we get to a date, 1983, and we cannot penetrate further back. We will, as the, my adversary said today, give credit for that amount at 1983 because we have no reason to question it. So we will make the assumption that the uh, trading was accurate and that the profits were fairly made, and they will get paid that amount. David Sheehan and Irving Picard, thank you very much for joining us exclusively on Fox Business. We're going to throw back to you. But again, no decision today. And ultimately, Mr. Picard, who is trying to recover funds for the victims of Mr. Madoff, they're hoping they'll get more than the $8 billion figure that's been uh, bandied about. It could be more. It could be less. Throwing back to you in New York. Terrific yeah, exclusive excellent. interview with Mr. Picard. Thank you very much.